5 shots in a clip, 2 fire modes and enough stopping power for just about anything. This is the Euphona Prime. Hey guys, hello and welcome back. As always, my name is Lazar and today we're gonna be diving deeper into the first weapon to ever require Mastery Rank 14. I have a couple of builds laid out for you guys, something cheap and affordable, something anybody can get into, but of course we also have that in-game setup with a Riven. That being said, I will be keeping my new player friendly approach, so if you're a veteran of the game, please bear with me. And with that out of the way, let's jump into the Euphona Prime. First of all, let's take a presentation of the weapon so you fully understand how it functions. It has two fire modes. The primary is called Metal Slug. And as you can see, it fires, well, a metal slug which has a bit of a drop-off to it. You see, it kind of goes to the side like that. You want to treat this one as you would firing a bow for the most part. And it also has a bit of a travel time. Now, the secondary fire for the uh, Euphona Prime is a buckshot, a shotgun fire, pretty much. With a horrendous spread. As you can see, the spread is absolutely hilarious. Now, in order to get good results out of this one, you really need to be close and personal with your target. Even if you're something like, I don't know, 5 meters away from your target, the spread is absolutely hilarious and by default it will fire 10 pellets. Other than that, 2 second reload time as you can see and only 5 shots in a clip with a total ammo capacity of 40. But let's jump into stats and see precisely what we're dealing with. My Euphona Prime has a capacity of 60 out of 60 and if your Euphona only has 30 out of 30 then jump into actions and plug in an Orokin Catalyst. The Orokin Catalyst can be obtained from alerts, invasions or if you're lucky from the daily sortie. If not, simply pay 20 plat to plug one in. My weapon has been format a total of 4 times, but for the builds I'm recommending you guys, no forma or 2 forma maximum will be enough. It really depends what we're gonna build the weapon for. The Euphona comes with 3 mod rise symbols, I added 3 more plus a dash but again this was done for the purpose of testing. If you guys want to build a weapon for buckshot with a full status build and I'll show you that a bit later, you're not gonna need to add additional forma. The accuracy of the metal slug is 100 and the critical chance 30% and multiplier 2.5x. Now this is awesome but again keep in mind that you will have to deal with the travel time and the drop off. Fire rate 1.5, magazine of 5 and a reload of 2.0. Building this weapon for high fire rate would be a bad idea simply because while you do get a bit of burst you're gonna be running into that reload time way too often and therefore maximizing your downtime. It's kind of a waste. In any case, Riven Disposition 2 out of 5 which means that the Rivens will be quite nice. The status chance is abysmal at 2.0 so there's really no need to go further into status chance when you have such a low base amount. By default it deals high amounts of impact and low amounts of puncture and slash. So again, this basically is for raw damage. The buckshot, however, is a different story. Accuracy is non-existent, critical chance is basically nothing, and the multiplier is nice at 2.0x, however, there's nothing you could do with a base critical chance of 2.0, so therefore the multiplier becomes useless as well. The falloff is from 6 to 12, so once again, you're gonna have to be close and personal to your target to get the most you can out of buckshot. Same magazine, reload and driven disposition of course, status chance however is 30% which means we will be able to get this weapon to a true 100% status chance with the 460 60 mods. The damage, impact, puncture and a high amount of slash, basically this is a mini Tigris Prime, if the Tigris Prime wasn't accurate at all that is. In any case, let's start slapping on some mods. Now the build you're gonna be going for is either slug, buckshot or perhaps a bit of a hybrid between the two. Let's take them one by one. First of all, the slug. Damage is the first thing we always add. Hornet strike is mandatory on basically any build, 220% extra damage. Next, we're gonna follow it up with crit chance and crit damage because again, we are building for the slug and crit chance and crit damage is basically all that it has. 120% crit chance with pistol gambit and of course, if you guys have uh, prime versions of any of the mods that I recommend, then by all means, use your prime versions. We also slapped on target cracker which is a bit underpowered with only 60% crit damage and now we got 66% crit chance and a 4.0 multiplier. Next, multi shot. And again, multi shot is mandatory just like damage, you should slap it on, on mostly any weapon. Barrel diffusion with 120 and we're also gonna be adding lethal torrent. Now lethal torrent, in case you don't have it, you get it from alerts, if not you can hop on over to the trade chat, 10, plat, maximum, something like that. 
The fire rate this mod offers is mostly useless for the Euphona. It's well, I guess it does help a little bit with the with the burst. But the primary reason we're using Lethal Torrent is that additional 60% multi shot. It's gonna be a lot more useful for the buckshot than it is for the slug. However. Next we should be looking towards amplifying our damage with elemental damage and as I said before elemental damage should be applied depending on where you're going and who you're fighting. I would recommend you build heat against the infested as they have four armor types. They have infested, infested flesh, uh, infested sinew and they also have something like fossilized. Each of those armor types have different resistances and vulnerabilities so against infested if you actually will bother to change your elementals around just go for heat. If you're going up against the corpus however, their shields take extra damage from magnetic or if you want to bypass their shields entirely, you can build gas. The status chance from gas can uh, proc toxin which will bypass their shields entirely and deal damage to their health. That being said, we're gonna go up against the Grenier because these are the toughest targets in Warframe. They have two armor types, Ferrite which is weak to corrosive and they also have Alloy which is weak to radiation. Their heavier units most of the time use corrosive. Bombards are also an issue and those guys use Alloy and against Bombards you would want to build radiation. But again, against Heavy Gunner and the Sword, your best bet will always be to build corrosive. We're gonna go for the 90 mods, over the 6060 mods because again we're building for the Metal Slug. Building 6060 would be kinda pointless considering the base status chance is only 2.0. So we're gonna go with Convulsion, as for our Toxin, Pathogen Rounds. 90 mods, again this will offer the highest amount of damage and going further into status with Jolt or Pistol Pestilence would be kind of a bad idea. The final mod slot is what I like to call an option slot. You can go for something like reload speed because again you will be bumping into it and it does get a bit annoying. The 10% status chance in the case of the metal slug is not really worth it but a 40% reload speed definitely is. How about some magazine capacity? That wouldn't be a bad idea, reload uh, less often, ice storm 40% magazine capacity and 40% uh, cold. That being said, the most amount of damage you can pork out will be with a bit more crit damage through sharpened bullets. Sharpened bullets is an on-kill effect, 75% crit damage while aiming for 9 seconds. Not a bad mod, I hate however on-kill effects, while I go for is usually either hydraulic crossers, on headshot 135 crit damage while aiming for 9 seconds. And if you don't know where to get this one, you can either pay 10 plat from the trade chat or you can farm Lua spy missions, check the link in the cards now for a quick and easy way to farm that. There's one more option and that would be Augur Pack. Now this will simply give you more flat damage. 90% you also have the benefit of the set. So the choice really is up to you. I'm gonna go with Hydraulic Crossers. Usually this is my comfort pick. Let's call it like that. We got our initial build, we're gonna kill all the enemies and by the way this is the new, well, Fingamajiki in the uh, simulacrum. You can see the armor that your enemies have and you can also see the resistances and vulnerability so that is quite nice. We're gonna be spawning in level 115 Corrupted Heavy Gunner and again we're gonna go for some Metal Slug action. As you can see it does deal a fair amount of damage, quite nice and I got the extra crit chance from Hydraulic Crossers, look at that, that orange crit. 12,000. That is because, once again, of hydraulic crossers. You'd be able to get a lot more um, orange crits if you would use the prime version of Pistol Gambit. Now if you want to use Buckshot, again nice close and personal, you see I am getting some corrosive effects on the target because again Buckshot has a much higher status chance. Then again Buckshot is a shotgun fire which means that the status chance does get divided among your pellets. That's what's what? Five? Buckshots and no status chance on the target. Now I would call this, well, pretty bad. For an MR-14 weapon taking this many shots and reloading this many times, I don't like it. So let's switch up the build for something a bit different. We're gonna build the weapon for Buckshot. Now before I build the weapon for Buckshot, I gotta tell you guys how status chance works on pellet-based weapons, pellet-based shotguns and so on and so forth. If you guys want to get a true 100% status chance for the buckshot for a pellet based weapon then you gotta go for 100% status chance before multi shot effects. Multi shot can trick you on pellet based weapons and if you get a 100% status chance with multi shot the status chance basically gets divided among your pellets. I know it's a bit confusing and a tad weird but that is how pellet based uh, weapons work. So in order to get the real 100% status chance and 
or our pellets to apply status, we're gonna need the 60 60 mod starting with Jolt. This is the rarest and the most expensive out of the bunch on PC. Battlecrit tier brought it a couple of weeks ago. I think it's around 40 plat, 50 plat, something like that. Next, Scorch is the 60 60 heat mod, Frostbite for cold, and Pistol Pestilence for uh, toxin. By the way, Pistol Pestilence, Corrupted Vore in the Void, easy to farm, and all of these outside of Jolt are maximum 15 plat from the trade chat. Now with these four on, we got a 100% true status chance with no multi-shot applied. Now we can put back our multi-shot since we know we're not getting tricked by its value. So let me put this here and this here. There we go. We slapped on our multi-shot back and we got a true 100% status chance. Now for the final uh, slot, what I recommend you guys doing is further increasing the slash of the weapon. If you take a look at what kind of damage types we have now, we have radiation and viral because of how I arranged my mods and I'm going to show you how you can arrange them. And we also have uh, 5900 slash. What I want from this weapon is for the slash to be the highest so I can get the most amount of slash out of it. If the viral is highest, I'm gonna get a lot of viral and I'm gonna get a lot of radiation, but what I want is slash. So you gotta slap on main. Very common mod, not expensive at all, and it will add 120% slash, which means that my slash jumps up to 12.9k, higher than radiation and viral, higher than my two elemental combos. Now you can switch your elemental combos around with something very simple like this. You take your frostbite and you put it here, now you all of a sudden have gas and magnetic. You can put your pistol pestilence over here, or over here better said, and now you're back to radiation and viral. Radiation and viral is going to be the ideal way to build this weapon for buckshot. Once again, you want the viral effect to reduce uh, the enemy's health by 50%, so your slashes will be doing double damage. Now let's see what kind of uh, result we're going to get on the exact same targets, of course. And again, you got to go close and personal, because if you don't look... That's not very impressive at all. However, if I come in close, look at that. I got all my statuses on the target. It's bleeding heavily, but of course it's not gonna die in a single shot. If you wanna kill these guys, two to three shots from close range will be mostly enough. I got my viral application on the target, so 50% of the health and the slashes are ticking away beautifully. One, two, three. More than enough. Let's get a fresh target. One, two, three. Look at that. Now that is a whole lot more impressive. However, the drawback is that you gotta be really close to your target. The slashes are absolutely nuking it because again, the high pellet based amount we firing. Uh, with the current multi shot we got, we're firing around 27, 28 pellets per shot. Now that's a lot of pellets, so therefore a lot of slashes because it is the highest status chance right now on the weapon. Again, it acts like kind of a mini Tigris Prime. Two, three. There you go. Absolutely bloody beautiful. Highly effective. But if I'm from here, one, two, uh, three, four, five. Five shots. I got my applications. The only issue is that the viral might run out. Yeah, the viral will run out before it kills it because I didn't hit it with all my pellets as the spread is bloody hilarious. So that's about it for the primary and secondary fire builds. How about a little bit of hybrid between the two? Basically what I did is to swap out Lethal Torrent and Maim for the crit chance and crit damage which will help the Metal Slug. If you guys don't have the Prime versions then simply use the normal ones. I kept all of the 60-60 mods but this time I built Corrosive together with Blast because I want to use the Buckshot as an armor strip then I want to finish off my target with the Slug. For the next test I'm going to be picking up Volban Prime because again I have Blast and I don't want them to be knocked all over the place. And of course, we're gonna simply re-simulate the same targets. Now, the way this one works, again, is in tandem, using both fire modes, one after the other. I'm gonna armor strip with one to two buck shots, then I can finish off a target with the metal slug. Look at that. Pretty good, yes? Now, this is mostly my fun build, because I did want to use both of the Euphona Prime's fire modes. You don't have to build like this, definitely not. But it is a build that uh, makes use of both of its awesome fire modes so the choice is really up to you if you hit a target without armor stripping eh, doesn't deal that much does it so again armor strip first then you can finish off your target the problem i have with the euphona is that it's best built 
objectively speaking, is the bleed build from Viral and the 60-60 mods. The problem with that build is that you need to be so up close and personal with your target, which to be honest, most of the time is not really the best of ideas. So there's that. In any case, now that the free builds I wanted to present to you guys are out of the way, let's switch to my Riven setup. Of course, I do have a Riven. This one is a loaner from a friend. Thank you very much. We got Electricity, which is the most versatile elemental currently in Warframe. If you want an elemental damage type on your Riven, then definitely Electricity is the way to go. You can make Erosive, you can make uh, Radiation, etc. And I also got a fair amount of crit chance, 144% and a negative, nice negative there damage to corpus, like it actually matters. Other than that, not much has changed from the build, still the 90 mods, and this is a slug build. And of course I swapped in the prime versions as well. Now let's see what kind of a difference do we get with a badass Riven. It's not really that badass though, because again, the Riven disposition of the Euphono Prime is only 2 out of 5. And again, this is a slug build. 2. Three, four, not bad. I love big numbers. Can you blame me? Pretty good. As long as I can kill one of these high level targets in a full clip, then I am satisfied with my secondary. One, two, three. Almost got him. Good enough. However, now that that's out of the way, let's get Mirage Prime. She is a bit of a weapon specialist and if you guys want to get the most out of your weapons then I definitely recommend you look into Mirage. We're going to be using pistol lamp, this will increase uh, pistol damage by 27% and we also have two arcanes. Arcane precision can be obtained from the third Eidolon down on Cetus, if not you can buy it, I think it's around 140, 150 plat DR3. On headshot, 80% chance for plus 100 and 20% damage to pistols for 8 seconds. As for the second one, I'm gonna be using Arcane Awakening. On reload, 40% chance for plus 100 damage to pistols for 16 seconds. There is another one, it's called Arcane Velocity, which synergizes very well with Arcane Awakening. This one on critical hit will give us fire rate, however for the Euphona, not that uh, great of an idea, so Awakening and Precision is what I recommend to you guys. And let's respawn the same targets. We're gonna be using Mirage's clones and of course her free ability for a massive 500 plus percent damage boost. And look at this. Beautiful. One shot. One shot. One shot. The Euphona Prime can definitely pack a punch. Just keep in mind that this is with some extreme Warframe buffs and basically I am one-shotting these high level targets. And that's pretty much gonna do it for the build. Hopefully now you know everything you need to to build your Euphona Prime. I believe that the weapon is absolutely awesome. It does offer some flexibility in terms of build, so you're not gonna get bored too quickly with it. As always, my name is Ben Lazar. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like, favorite, share, and subscribe if you enjoy the content. If you have any feedback for me or would like to request a specific weapon build, then by all means, leave it in the comment section down below. I can't possibly guarantee you that I will do it like next time, but I will read through each and every comment. But until next time, guys, bye-bye.